All right, let's just jump into it, shall we? Red Locks, thanks for the half a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Before uh, we jump into the deck, I would just like to remind folks that one week from today, we will be covering the next Hoaglandia Open here on stream. It's going to be a historic tournament with AHK cards legal in it. So if you are interested in playing in that, make sure you check it out. The signups are open on MTG Melee now. At any rate, let's jump on into Sultai Vow here. So uh, Kamal's Juridic Vow doing its best Genesis Wave impression here. Look at the top X cards of your library. You may put a land and or legendary, any number of land and or legendary permanents with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. And then you put the rest into your graveyard. Ryumi, thank you for the third of the year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So the goal here is to ramp up with Uro, Explore, and Grazer. And then we've got lots of various ramp payoffs. We've got things like Nissa and Golos. We've got some Ugin and some Ulmog at the very top end of our curve. And then Kamal's Juridic Vow with sufficiently large X in its casting cost can actually generate a combo kill for us. So the combo kill is you floop a whole bunch of your deck into play. And ideally you find your Jace Wielder of Mysteries plus a God Eternal Bantu. And then God Eternal Bantu trigger will let you sacrifice a bunch of the permanents that you just flooped into play. And then you draw out the remainder of your deck, which allows you to win with Jace Wielder of Mysteries static text. So we've got some cheap legendary things like Fibble Fip. We also lean on things like Massacre Girl as our sweeper because we're interested in having her as a legendary body because legendary body we can find with druidic vow she also enables us to cast druidic vow remember in order to cast a legendary sorcery we have to have a legendary planeswalker or creature in play same reason why we play fibble fip and then obviously uro is uro nice that he's legendary and enables us but also just like ramps and gains us life and stuff um i'm expecting this deck to really struggle against aggressive decks I'm expecting it to do well against mid-range control and other ramp strategies. We do have four Field of the Dead hiding out in our mana base down here at the bottom too. Our face down card over here is Yorian because, you know, why would we fix bugs on Arena? Let's go ahead and pop on into some matches here with this and hopefully we can find some uh, some other ramp decks and some control decks to beat up on today. Najo Mage, thank you for the very generous tier two sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. See some folks using the raid command in chat. Raid is a mobile game that I play a ton of offline. It's a turn-based strategy game slash RPG. You can find it on Android, iOS, as well as on PC. And they're going to be doing a sponsored segment for them tomorrow with some gameplay. If you want an easy way to support my content, give them an install using my link and play through the tutorial. As a thank you to anybody who plays through the tutorial after installing using my link, I will gift you a sub to my channel so you can pop on into the subs discord to talk about magic raid and all sorts of other games. If you're already a sub and you do that and you play through the tutorial, uh, you can bump a deck in the queue as a thank you. Hey, I'm supposed to mulligan this again looking for some ramp cards. Uh oh, basic mountain. Die Harlequin, thank you for the 26 months, welcome back. The Great Ogsby. Thank you for the five months. All right, well, Goblins is probably not a good matchup for us, but we've got Massacre Girl in the opener here at least, so maybe we've got a shot. Yeah, and this is this is the problem. So like I like with Massacre Girl, we can this this card stops Massacre Girl for starters. Let's plus this and name. What's the closest thing to a land we can name? Because we can't name a land. It's probably just like explore, right? And then if she survives at least three loyalty, she could down tick to pick up a land. Good chance. Good chance they attack her. Now they could also maybe ignore her. If they ignore her and just attack us, we're probably dead too. Like I said, was not expecting this archetype to be particularly competitive against uh, aggressive strategies, and the goblin deck is definitely aggro combo. Hmm. 
Mm, that's a thought. Fibble Thip would have drawn a card and it also could set up Massacre Girl to kill the board. I think that's a good, this is a good thought lawyer. I don't know that we're going to have enough time to do that, but I think you're right that that would have been a good line. We're just dead. All right, so I got some cages. I'm gonna trip Ulamog at the top end. Tamio ticking up is too slow. Um, how are we trying to stay alive? Search probably doesn't accomplish much. Need three cuts. Cutting a land is... I think I'm on 40 lands, right? Yeah. Cutting a land like a Bajuka Bog that's not super relevant here seems fine. Maybe trimming Golos is reasonable. When you scroll down, the Ugin alt art scrolls through the top part of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh magic arena and i expect that this bug will be a lot like the opponent's card sleeve bug in that it's just going to exist for forever because functionally it doesn't hurt anything that's that's something yeah i think uro's still good even with cage um we can yori and blink cage on occasion and, like, just gaining life and ramping is also good. <sighs> Unfortunate mulligan here with no green sources. Sure, this is a keep. He is supposed to keep the fourth land instead of the Juridic Vow. Burning lands, please. All right. Uh, I really wanted a land we didn't already have. Should have been more specific, I suppose. Yeah, I should have kept the Fable Passage instead of this Druidic Bow. Not that it looks like it matters. Again, I don't think this deck has, has a Snowball's Chance against a reasonable aggro draw. Especially, like, if the aggro deck isn't explicitly weak to Massacre Girl, and, like, when they have their Goblin Lord, they're not, I think we're just gonna gonna get run down most of the time I think I'm all looking this it just doesn't have enough mana like, a Boreal Grazer without lands to put into play is really bad. Whereas, like, this hand's super reasonable, right? Because it gets, has three lands with the Grazer. So we'll keep this. We'll bottom. Got Eternal Bond tool. We'll get to go Overgrown Tomb Grazer. Put in Zogoth Triome. Then we can go tap land Fibble Pip on two. This could just be a good, good ramp deck draw. They've got Uro and Nissa. And that'll be another question too when we play through these games. Like, how often are we generating a good ramp deck draw and just winning with like Nissa and Ugin? And how often is the Druidic Bow actually useful and not just like an extra slash not necessary? Huh? I think I just been the Uro. We attack Davriel for two here. Play a tapped land. Put Yorian in my hand. Next turn we can discard this to this. And then we can miss the turn after. We're being tiny bones, chat. 
I think our opponents are excited for Thoughtseize to get added to this format. The real, a big, the big problem with Tiny Bones right now is that Tiny Bones doesn't work with the best discard spell in this format, which for reference is Agonizing Remorse currently. So like, if your disc, if your thing doesn't work with the best discard spell in the format, it's like, well, soon, soon Thoughtseize will be the best discard spell in the format. I'm actually going to animate Field of the Dead here because I want to keep my colors of mana. And if they're killing my lands anyways, I, uh, I'm i not going to be triggering Field of the Dead. So I think getting rid of that is fine. Bones should say discard or exiled from hand. Yeah, I think so. El Jeffe Grand, thank you for the quarter of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So they tried to stop Fibblethip here, which does not work. Well, it gets rid of Fibblethip, but, you know, details. Was it good for you, opponent? It was good for me. What's going on, Wolfie? Thanks for the 20 months. Yeah, yeah, the, the raid sponsored segments are always good for adding to the Hooklandia clans. And if you if you install raid and you enjoy it, we have a channel that uh, a bunch of us talk about it in. I play a bunch of it off stream. So there's lots of folks in the community that can help you out min-maxing and optimizing things in the game. It's a reasonable turn-based strategy game. So, probably want Ugin against their mid-range deck. I actually probably don't want Massacre Girl here. A couple of trophies sound good. They don't seem like they have a lot of things that I really need to be massacring. A couple of pieces of spot removal, extra Ugin to go over the top sounds great. Tameo is just absurd here. Very funny. Stops there. Stops their discard spells. Need some lands here, but we're on the draw. Definitely not about to take a mulligan with a hand that has lands and spells against a deck full of discard. Is this historic? Yeah, that's what the stream title says. Probably don't need two Ugins. Hey, thanks to whoever checked out the raid sponsor there. If you're someone that does the raid tutorial and you would like a gifted sub or to bump something in the queue, drop me a DM and I'll get that taken care of after the stream is done today. If you don't have time to do that right now, you'll be able to install a raid using the link um, for the next uh, week or so, up to the first 300, 325 installs and tutorial playthroughs. Down Fibble D Thip here. That's a good question. Let me pull up my dashboard. I have a dashboard that tells me how activity feed. Yep, yeah, Dows, that was, that was you. Just finished it. Thank you. Are we just cycling this? Oh, it, oh, this is kind of funny. Cycling the land with Waste Dot out actually lets them draw a card. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put Yorian in hand and I'm, I'm just gonna hold up Trophy for now. We'll wait and see what they do. Uh, Close Dows, H-A-I-L-E-Y. Yeah, I think I think we're killing the Liliana here rather than rather than their waste not. Good at end of turn though, obviously. I 
I'm a survivor. Go tap land four or five here. Yeah, yeah, they get they get mana if we draw a card. If we uh do a cycle one of these, that is correct. No fire, no steel. I have some mana. We're just doing that for now. I don't know. Maybe it's right to keep the keep the the what's it called? Just give them a card. Shiver my horns and hammer. No fire. So I only have I only have six six uh, six lands here. So I think we're discarding the Ugin rather than the Jace. As you will. I assume they're going to take the Uro here. Yeah, that card's going to bury them otherwise. Feels like we're in an okay spot. I get to kill... I get to kill Angrath here. And then I have Jace to start drawing... Drawing two cards per turn. Yeah, yeah, Jace digs us to another Uro too, which is great. Uh, I'm gonna hold this land in hand, so if they play something like Bugler Rat, I can discard that and hopefully keep Druidic Foe. Uh, hey, thanks for 17 months too much, dog. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So, concession? I assume that's a concession, Bo. Paradise Sal, thanks for 27 months. Bye, friend! <laughs> Dr. Jack, thanks for the 17 months. How's magic been since the bat? More good than bad. It's been very, very reasonable. Hey, I had some misses still, but that's always, always going to be the case, I think. Thomas, thanks for the 12 months. I appreciate the entire year support. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, that sounds great. Thing, thing. Think, think, think. Do, 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 here. Hey, C Doy. Thanks for checking out the raid sponsor. I appreciate it. Drop me a DM to let me know if you'd like a gifted sub to the channel or uh, or to bump something in the queue. Looks like red aggro. At least I have a blocker and an Uro early. We'll see. If this hand that we have can't beat red aggro, probably nothing we can does. You don't get to see any more 5D chess. So I actually, um, on the last sub survey, I actually had almost half of the people that responded say they enjoyed the variety segments. So uh, I'm planning to do at least one to two variety segments a week again, uh, and starting next week after... After what's it called? I'm gonna get Temple down for a Black Source. And so they have for your Jed Chick. I appreciate it. Would you build Valkyrie for Clan Boss if you already have an unkillable setup? Nah, probably not, Jed Chick. 
Maybe, maybe if you're looking to build a second team for the Nightmare Clan boss, but if you're already, like, cheesing UNM and you, like, don't need her for, like, 3v3 arena or... Or what's it called? 3v3 arena or, or faction wars? Probably not worthwhile. She's good. She's a good arena champ, though. If you want to, if you, you want to work her into a 3v3 team. Yeah, there have been a number of people that have been posting success with various uh, Grixis control decks. That is, uh, that's a big in champ. That is. Is a big mama. I think tramples too. I already have a field of the dead. I think I'm just gaining one. Like none of these utility lands seem particularly good, right? Thanks for checking out the raid sponsor, Horizon Fallacy. I appreciate it. I think I think we're just getting a gain one here. Are there dragon-like champions in raid? Yeah, they have. There's a lizard man faction. That's dragon-esque things. Uh, drop me, drop me a DM fallacy, and I'll gift you the sub after the after the stream today. Yeah, maybe getting a second field was good. Yeah, I think I think you might be right. The second field might have been ideal there. I was thinking I already had one, but you're right. I already have, like, a bunch of other differently named lands, so I could have just had, like, two fields active starting next turn. That's a really good observation. I believe if you've already done it on your current PC, you can't do it again. Fairly, fairly certain. Yeah, like this, this land could have made two zombies if I would have, uh... Pretty sure we just throw everything in front of these to try and survive. Yeah, so the problem is they can just burn our face here, which lets them kill our other things. But I, I, I also think that's like, you know, I need to block here, right? Because I can't just, like, take these hits. Oh, really? I'm surprised if they would have killed a zombie there, their 6-6 six -six would have lived, right? Maybe they have another slaying fire in their hand? They must they must have another slaying fire in their hand, right? I get I get to Uro here, is exactly correct. Unfortunately, do not get to play another blue card out because I'd have to pay life for it. I'm not interested in shocking for any of these things. This is kind of like pretty peak magic 2020. Like, our deck has basically no respect for the aggro matchup. But it just doesn't matter because Uro just makes our deck so incidentally good in matchups like this. So... I think I want to blink Uro here because the only way I lose this game is like accidentally getting burned out, right? Like I know I'll lose the Uro, but I think going to 11 this turn is actually quite valuable. So I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 11 mana total. So I can do this. Do this. And Tamio, Tamio is just going to fill the bin back up. I'm going to name Uro here. And then we'll play Yori and Blink Uro. It's going to put us to 11. Massacre Girl actually seems kind of medium here. 
She doesn't kill a lot of their stuff, but I'm bringing the extra Ugin. Like I said, I think we have to be pretty fortunate to win this kind of matchup. It had to have a curve very similar to what we had that game. Yeah, yeah, that, that one Uro gained us like 12 life and we finished the game at 11, right? All right, well, we found what we were looking for to start. Hey, Sunshine, thanks for keeping me around. I appreciate it. I appreciate the very generous Tier 3 and all your other support here over the last uh, little more than a year and a half. said i'm not sure that just uro is enough kind of feel like we probably need like an arboreal grazer or a an, ab an arboreal grazer or a fibble fit before it to block a little bit we'll see though if we had untapped lane for golos find field of the dead like maybe we have a shot here okay with that draw i think we get a life gain land here Although, I don't know that that really makes much of a difference. Still dead to shock and haste things. I'm not dead yet! Hey, thanks to whoever just finished out the raid tutorial. I appreciate you checking out the sponsor. So, I attack with this. And then we Yorian, blink the Golos to untap it. I have one, two, three, four. I only have five differently named lands currently. I think I think I'm just getting another life gain land here because every point of health is gonna matter. I have enough lands now that next turn I can bond to sack a bunch of lands to have enough to escape Uro. Okay, so that's a Nissa. So if I do this, I have 10 mana afterwards, right? I have 8 plus 2. She doesn't alt till seven. So there's two cards total in my bin. So I need to sack 
um, four lands to be able to escape Uro here. Right? Oh, I can't sack Breeding Pool because I didn't float. That's a mistake. Uh, are you on the desktop version of Twitch, Jed Chick? It doesn't, that feature doesn't appear when you're on, when you're on mobile. You'll be able to use the server from mobile once you join it, but you have to join the server initially from the desktop. Um, the cost of including colorless lands in your deck is not free. It's definitely the case. Two gain minus four is lethal. Is that still true with the incinerator? Because we lose, we lose this. They go block here. They take seven thirteen. Yeah, it is, isn't it? That's really funny. Uh, did you just renew your sub today? If you just if you just renewed it today, there's a little bit of a delay. Because it doesn't sync it instantaneously. Is Rage Shadow Legends free to play? It is, yep. Yeah. Hey, if you give it install using the link. Easy way to support my content. Game's completely free. Oh, they can't block bot you too. That's true, he's menacing. That's funny. Oh yeah, I could even technically leave the Chandra there. It doesn't matter. You're you're right. I could have kept the Uro. I don't need the Uro though, right? They block the three. They take nine, twelve, fifteen. What a silly game. Marga, thanks for checking out the raid sponsor. Appreciate it. <laughs> I am. Well, there's a well, there's a way, chat. Really bad against aggro doesn't mean 0%. We we mauled the four that game, right? Like opponent opponent flooded a little bit, but we we started on four cards. Kept kept two lands, two two lands, two Uros and a dream. Yep. There might there might be something to this Uro card, chat. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna have to keep exploring, but there might be there might be something to this Uro card. Land, land, Uro beats aggro. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, this hand sounds great. Well, that's perfect as long as they don't have a uh, Goblin Chieftain. More to Mr. Mark the Shark. <laughs> the latest ban list update was a much needed refreshment to the format. Just, just lovely. I'm also, I'm also excited to see what happens with AHK. Like, I feel like, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. I think the, I think the Sacrifice deck is probably the best deck in Historic right now. But I also think with Amonkhet coming and a Braid going to be introduced to the format, I think there's a good chance that that could change. 
Hey, thanks to whoever just completed the raid tutorial. I appreciate that. Thanks for checking out the sponsor. Hi, I'm Ken. Thanks to 11 months. Yeah, yeah, the fact that a braid kills Devil and Oven and Citadel is really huge. Really, really huge. It's going to be... Going to be quite the massacre, chat! Make a zombie. Go. Delicious. I'm gonna grab a second field of the dead here. Pick my Orion up. Attack with Masquerade. I've got nine mana currently. Okay, here's Muxus. I got a lot of blockers. Red Rover, Red Rover, let Muxus come over. Bye, friend. I don't... I don't think Rest in Peace is very good in this format. I think Grafting... I think with Goblins being a thing in the format... Graftigger's Cage is... Graftigger's Cage is just the better card for the most part. Unless your deck explicitly gets hurt by the cards can't enter from your library part of Graftigger's Cage, I think Cage tends to just be better. Yeah, Cage, Cage hits Citadel 2, which is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, the, the non-graveyard line of text on Graftigger's Cage is super relevant in this format, I feel. I'm going to get rid of the combo aspect in this aggro matchup, I think. Let's try, let's try this. Sure, something like that's a good example. Like, if you were playing a collected company deck with white knit, perhaps you want rip over cage. But, like, the other part of that is, too, like, what are you using it for? Like, in a green-white company deck, for example, my question to you would be, do you want rest in peace over something like, say, the 2-1 spirit that exiles a graveyard when you sacrifice it, right? Like, something that you can hit off your collected company. It depends on, depends on what graveyard decks you care about, I suppose. I mean, the long and short of it is, I think it's worth playing Cage in my Uro deck, and that's why I'm doing it. Alright, kind of looking for Massacre Girl, huh? You can company into Containment Priest. Well, Containment Priest is symmetrical. So, like, if you put Containment Priest out, you're not going to be able to company again. But that also just might be okay. Because, like, you just resolved the company. So, anyways, they started blasting. Historic is very likely to undergo a significant number of changes over the course of the next six months, I feel. Like, the historic format we're currently playing today is likely to look a good bit different once we get Amonkhet Remastered into the format, and then what happens after Amonkhet Remastered drops is likely to look different when we get Pioneer Masters later this year. And then I think, um... After we get Pioneer Masters, is very likely to be the point where things start to stabilize a little bit. Like, with Amonkhet Remastered and then Pioneer Remastered, 
um, the format will be dense enough that newer card drops should I theoretically have smaller impacts on the format overall. So I, I imagine whatever the format largely looks like at the end of the year will give us a better idea of what it's going to look like in the long term. I hope Stark doesn't get swept under the rug once, um, once Pioneer hits Arena. Well, I mean, Historic not only has ban list differences from Pioneer, like, for example, Tefri Time Raveler is currently still legal in Pioneer, um, but past just ban list differences, there's also a number of cards that create a unique experience in Historic, and we already know from their roadmap they don't intend to stop doing Historic Anthologies once we're closer to once we're closer to having Pioneer on the format, right? Like, Historic is going to keep growing in both directions, getting older Magic cards and newer Magic cards added, and Pioneer will only get cards from one of those directions. I think I'm bottoming the Blast Zone here. Have you ever tried Eternal CCG? The best way I can describe Eternal CCG is that, in my opinion, it feels like Fisher-Price Magic. It feels like someone asked themselves the question, how do we take magic and strip it down so it'll play on a cell phone? And that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're in the market for someone that wants to play magic on a cell phone. But I don't I don't feel like Eternal Card Game really does anything especially innovative or different from magic. Do I prefer Historic or Pioneer as a format? Well, I never, I am never going to play a format of Magic where the card Jeffrey Time Raveler is legal again. So, unless they decide to boot his butt out of, out of Historic, out of Pioneer, I don't intend to touch that format, even once it's on Arena. Mike the Knight, thanks for checking out the raid sponsor, I appreciate it. I think I'm just Massacre Girling, Girling here. Warchief is really scary. I, 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 I mean, I said that a while ago, right, Steel Dingleberries? If, I, if I'm being honest, I didn't expect to go back to playing Historic. I I was fully expecting Wizards to leave Tefri Legal in these formats, and I was really surprised when they didn't. I was happy about it, but genuinely surprised. Like, I, I was planning to take off of Magic until Rotation and then come back and only play Standard. It's like, that card's just rancid. And I'm, I'm glad I have an unrotating format I can play again and enjoy. Variety, variety is the spice of life. Being a, being able to cast your instance at instant speed is one of the best things about magic. Being able to respond to things. It's good, it's good stuff. Pretty sure I want the guaranteed land here. even though it's a land I already have for field. Uh, I think we do this, and then... <sighs> am I willing to take this trade here for the forest? I think I am. And then when they don't take it, we get to put Yorian in my hand here to threaten to blink Massacre Girl. I'm looking to buy back into it. Is there anything that might be safe or should I hold off? I, if you're looking to buy explicitly into historic, you realistically, I don't think you can do that with security until like, until after Pioneer Masters happens, which is going to be a while at this point. Pioneer, Pioneer Masters is supposed to happen sometime this fall, but we don't have an exact timeline on that yet. Missed out on some gobbles on their upkeep. Maybe they could potentially want to attack with this. Uh, 
Remember, chat, magic is nothing like gambling. It is a high skill, low variance endeavor that in no way involves looking at the top six cards of your deck to find out if you win the game or not. Am I ever going back to play modern? No. I do not intend to revisit magic online on my channel. With with the addition of Rune Terra as a card game I'm really enjoying, I feel like just Arena and Rune Terra give me a wide enough range of card game formats to enjoy. Magic Online is really slow and clunky and just takes forever. If I if I never load Magic Online again, it'll be too soon. Digitech Wire, thanks for the 22 months. I appreciate that. I think sometime a decade from now, when Modern comes to Arena, if they ban Tefri in the format, sure. But I, I mean what I said. I don't I don't ever intend to play formats of Magic on stream again where Tefri Time Reveler is legal. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. A Hoagland is faithful, 100%. get search going here. I'm not really ramping into anything, so I think waiting a turn to explore is fine here. Has Tefri played modern? Yes, Tefri's played in every format he's legal in. Literally every one of them. The card is very good. Huh. Yeah, I think I'm down for an 0-3. Love a land on top. Nah, you're fine, Niv. You know, you know my policy. Don't let people make you feel bad for playing things you enjoy. Magic's a game you should play for fun. Uh, nope, never touch those ones. Better blight. I have, I have played a lot of board games over the years, as the shelving behind me would indicate. My, uh, my wife collects board games. Which, for those of you who are unfamiliar, the act of collecting board games and playing board games, those are two different hobbies. Especially, especially in the post-plague times, playing board games is more challenging. A magic player in chat posits that collecting board games is an expensive hobby. Considering most board games cost less than a Scalding Tarn, an expensive board game, expensive board game costs less than a Scalding Tarn. I'm going to disagree with you. I'm gonna activate castle here, I think. I think I wanna kill this so that way I can massacre girl them. The only good two player board game recommendations. There aren't a ton of games that, in my opinion, translate super well to, to two player for board games. I think one of the few good ones that I would recommend is probably um, Sagrada, is, is a very reasonable two player game. Duke. It's only for four, which is like one less than we normally want, but in. Wow, what a beating. 
So normally you want to do this for at least five, as shown. Missed the Nissa. We did at least get a 2 2, I suppose. Is opponent just had stone cold nothings? We've been real fortunate in our aggro matchup so far today. I guess this build my graveyard for Sorceress Kanta. So that's nice. So I get to hold up as Kanta activation here and Blast Zone. Opponent's archetype, generally speaking, does not have traditional reach in it outside of, like, fanatical firebrand here. So, if we can dodge second firebrand, we can dodge a ball. Hmm, I should probably make a zombie after I play Ugin, huh? Small mistake. Hobbitsot, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. My friends. Return to the essence of the multiverse. The essence of the multiverse. I'm gonna lead back maximum number of blockers here since I accidentally got rid of a zombie. They brick again here, they're dead. That's lethal, which is sad. So close and yet so far away. I assume they have another firebrand in their deck. Womp womp. We were pretty fortunate to get this far. Kamal's Juridic Bow versus Genesis Ultimatum, which is bad. God, Genesis Ultimatum is probably a lot better. You don't have to play a bunch of bad cards in your deck. <laughs> I forgot I forgot Tiber Ultimatum was a thing. That's that's like almost assuredly just a better version of this. Almost almost assuredly better off. I'm breeding pool here, even though I have triumphs. I think I'm gonna fibble thip on two. Get our get our blocker down first to start. Sure. I don't know, ga games like Go and Chess aren't, like, terribly enjoyable unless you have two people that are incredibly close in skill level to each other. Which, it's not impossible, but it's definitely improbable, right? You know, I think I messed up here, and I was supposed to sequence this so I could cycle the Baron more this turn. Need to draw Massacre Girl next turn. And I would have had an extra shot at drawing it if I would have, uh... If I would have cycled. Well, I guess I can cycle this turn regardless and still cast her.
So, should be dead here to the Goblin Chieftain. To set a low bar, this set's gone much better than I was expecting it to. Weren't we going to play Ultimatum? No. I think if you're looking to just floop things into play, Ultimatum's definitely better than having, like, this cheeky, this tough setup and, like, trying to do this awkward combo that's almost never going to happen. But this was a Vow deck. I'm not going to gut the deck, change a color, and rebuild it to be completely something different as the part of the deck submission. No. That's not what we do here. Haven't hit any control decks or opposing field decks, which are the place where the combo, the combo is actually reasonable, but maybe, maybe reasonable, reasonable is a stretch. The combos may be playable. Magic, Magic being the top 10 esport that it is on Twitch, naturally the first big, the first big post-ban standard tournament, the Red Bull Untapped event, does not have video coverage for its second day today. That nice layer. Yeah, Christy, Christy got a shiny Magic Carp yesterday too. They say why they don't have coverage. I don't believe so. The non-jaded part of me wants to think maybe they plan to have coverage but had some kind of personnel get sick or some kind of issue, technical issue that they couldn't overcome. But it still looks, re regardless of what the issue is, it looks real bad. Hopefully, hopefully all their people are okay, but it's just like real sad that there's no coverage for the event. Nissa, I know I just bought him to Nissa, but she's one of the better draws at this point. So I think we just name her. Or four lands on top, didn't matter. Okay, I don't have an untapped land, anyways. Maybe we name Uro here. I'm gonna name Explore because if we hit Uro, we'll just escape him. Tamiyo is quite, quite a scry. Maybe, maybe scry adjacent? So we get to vow for five next turn, which is nice. So if they kill my Tamiyo, I get to use Yorian. Thanks to whoever just completed the raid tutorial. I appreciate you checking out the sponsor. That's Anissa. 
So I could, I can vow for five here, or with Nyssa, I could cast her and then have two, three, four, five total left over. I'm going to vow for five, and then we'll minus Tamio to pick vow back up. Yeah, this ramps us nicely. Bajuka Vog here and exile my opponent's graveyard with their Uro in it. Oh, right. And Fibblethip gets to draw two cards there. Love it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's block this so they don't get the card underneath it. Okay, so Nissa makes, I have three forests, so Nissa makes three five mana. So playing Nissa is mana neutral, I believe here. As far as casting Druidic Vow is concerned, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total mana. And if I play Nissa, I'll have six, seven, eight, nine. Let's count that. Six. Seven, eight, no, yeah, okay. I mis miscounted there. Okay. No, I, for I forgot to count this as two. I counted the untap, but I forgot to count the other one as two. I'm going to grab Arc of Orzaka here, I think. I'm going to start drawing cards with that, because their Ugin can down tick to get rid of our zombies every turn, so extra field that it doesn't really matter. Oh, wait, with this Nissa, I can kill their 8-mana Ugin, right? So that's nice. You can send these here. I was supposed to I guess I technically have a white source if I get if I find my Abzan Triome I technically technically get to flip or activate Golos hey Conqueror thank you for the entire year of support let's get your sword to go with that shield You put a deck in through the deck submission. I will get back to you on that after the stream is done today. Hey, Sirenix. Thank you for the 11 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Are they dead? They can block. Is 
They get to draw these cards. That's probably fine, right? I don't think this is lethal, but we're going to start working our way there. You just have so many resources at this point. When in doubt, swing out. I am aware that Ugin does not kill Nissa lands. Those two synergize really well together. It's one of the reasons why Ugin is one of the best ramp payoffs in this format, if not the best. Okay. Didn't you see what wins on the end of aggro curves? Ember cleaves or Hazret? Is there a reason you don't want to put cleave on your Hazret? If I block here. They block these two. They take seven. This is lethal. Right? Right? I think that's right. Also, I also have Ugin. Yeah. Ugin also hits for three. The old bolt you. Look at that. We beat an Ulamog, chat. We beat Ulamog and a mana Ugin out of them. Our, our, to, to be fair is fair, our Druidic bows were actually very good that game, right? Like they were they were a part of the reason we won there. Uh, it actually seems kind of bad in this mirror. Massacre Girl doesn't necessarily seem stellar either. I think I want my trophies. Is it crazy to cut Grazer? Is it crazy to cut Grazer and just go a little bit slower? Yeah, Juridic Power is another, another layer of going over the top. Big agree. Yeah, picking up with Tamiya was great. I do that. I'm going to trim, trim Grazer. We were we were the bigger, greedier fish for once. This twas, twas bound to happen eventually. Sure. All of our colors, explore, ramp, payoff. It's like everything you want for Christmas. All I want for Christmas is a turn for Nissa. A turn for Nissa. A turn for Nissa. Do 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 And then I think with Nissa rolled up in hand here, this Tamio is naming. This Tamio is naming Vow. Gonna get nice ramped up here.
So we need to activate Tamio till after I cast Nissa so we can pick her back up like that. Solitaire, my opponent just negated my spell. Come on now. By taking submissions for build around submissions build arounds for AHK? I am, yeah. yeah. Everything everything that's on the list of things that were that were data mined for the new set are fine submissions. If you look if you look in the deck queue, there's an AHK There's an AHK uh, thing. AHK historic section. One Druidic Vow, please. Your has been good in some spots. You think we could play some main? I don't think so, Seth. I I still wonder. Oh, I wonder, wonder. Ooh, I do I. What's in my wonder deck? Um. <laughs> All right, we're here to this one. Um. I, I would be genuinely surprised if, I would be genuinely surprised if, what's it called, if uh, this archetype as built is more powerful than just playing a team or ramp deck with team or ultimatum. Like obviously you don't get to play the cheeky combo with team or ultimatum, but I think from a pure power level perspective that's likely just better. Luke, lukewarm take. Your eight mana planeswalker feeling game breaking is appropriate. If if there is a problem with Ugin, and I think that's a pretty big if, the problem is not Ugin, it's a Boreal Grazer, Growth Spiral, Uro, Explore, those kinds of things. Eight eight mana cards can and should end the game. Now, should eight mana cards be happening on turn five is a real discussion worth having, I think. But in in general, the eight mana card wins the game, I don't think is a, is a very reasonable argument. Yeah, that'd be fine, Wolfie. Are you worried about some of the data mined cards not being legal? No. N none of none of the data mined cards are cards like Black Lotus or Moxin, and they're all also explicitly were the masterpiece borders or whatever they're called on in Amonkhet, so it seems very likely that they're fine. Sure, Nissa Nissa's on the list of problematic things that ramp to. I agree with that. This is just too slow. Right, here we are. Should have should have kept the seven. So your face down companion while sideboarding has whatever image is on your opponent's card sleeve because of the card sleeve bug translates to the, it being face down there. Which is very funny. Uh, I should have put Yori in my hand. Sure, sorry, to rephrase. Um, they were either masterpieces or they're cards that are currently pioneer legal, which means they were guaranteed to get printed into historic at some point anyways. So again, for people that don't keep up, Everything that's Pioneer legal will eventually be Historic legal because Pioneer is coming to Arena and Historic is everything that's legal on Arena. 
So the few cards that aren't Pioneer legal, like Pact of Negation and Wrath of God, those are cards that had alternate borders in Amonkhet. Versus, um, versus cards that were guaranteed to be coming via Pioneer anyways. And I think with that, we're going to go ahead and put Chad on sub-only mode. That's kind of impressive. It took an hour and a half for someone to be a total jag off in chat. Normally, normally, normally it happens faster than that. Following, following since an hour ago. Yep, account created in July. Sounds, sounds about right. What's up, youngest son? Thanks for the tip, Wolfie. I appreciate it. I think we're pretty dead here. Thanks for the prime support, Topher. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine, Cody. For people who are enjoying chatting that are not subs, if you complete checking out the raid sponsor, playing through the tutorial, and drop me a DM, I will gift you a sub to the channel after we're done today as a thank you for checking out the sponsor. I was I was leaving chat open so non-subs could pull that command up themselves, but I'll just mention it and put it in chat on occasion. I don't know that I can keep hands that don't have ramp in them to start. We're on the draw here too. This hand's fine. Not amazing, but fine. Um, I don't have forest anyways for Nissa, so I think I'm going to keep the Golos here because Golos synergizes better with the Field of the Dead that we have. Bray Cerrone, thanks for the quarter of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Conclave Mentor, some kind of Bant Counters deck, it looks like. Sounds good, Wolfie. Uh, they opted to make light of people who are autistic, Engineer. Which seems like a good, a good point to, uh, close things up a little bit so I don't have to deal with people like that. Orthobur, thanks for the half a year. I appreciate that. It's not a land drop, but I guess it's better than drawing another five drop. 40, 40 lands later, they're ready for collected company, right?
Uh, Amonkhet Remastered releases on the 13th. Our next Oglandia Open will be on the 16th, and those cards will be legal for that event. Hey, thanks for the biddies, Cody. I appreciate it. Hope you're staying safe out there with all the storms and stuff going on. Morning, Enya. We're sacking Bugler to get a three drop, eh? There's something that distributes counters here. Oh, right. Rishkar's legal. That's really strong. So these both can become five fives. Yep. What's wrong? You want to take a shower after I'm done working? You can do that. You are allowed to be clean. It's encouraged, even. Love you, dude. So this is a land I already have, but it's a guaranteed untapped fifth land, so I think I'm supposed to keep it. Am I dead, though? I get to block here, and then I'm taking nine, so I'm not, I'm not dead on board, but I have to chump block, so probably dead in the long term. I think I'm getting a, am I getting a life gain land or is there utility land? I think I'm just getting a life gain land here. On the off chance, every point matters. Uh, I don't think so, Topher. That's going to give something plus three, plus three. That's pretty good. Is that? That's lethal, right? Because I block. Oh, wait. This can't attack. So I have to chump block, and then I go to two. Massacre Girl is an out, right? Would kill one, two, three. There's no four, four. That's unfortunate. So this would, one, two, three, four. I only have five different lands, so that doesn't work. I think we're on the zero router here. Yeah. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I think aggressive decks where, aggressive decks where Massacre Girl doesn't have text largely aren't good enough. Yeah, that doesn't work though, Decide On, because they had like non-two drop creatures. Like, they still had, had Rishkar in the Bugler. How do they deal with sweepers? So, and actually this is one of the reasons why I'm really excited to get Collected Company. I really hope that is one of the cards that's going to happen. Is um, Collected Company gives small creature decks much more play against sweepers. Because it gives them an instant speed angle of attack. It also allows them to hold up things like Heroic Intervention much easier. Because then you can play Collected Company when they don't play a sweeper into your Heroic. Which is nice. How's this deck been? Um, it's been better than I was expecting it to be, but I also wasn't expecting it to be very good. We've we've run a little bit good against aggressive decks in general. Um, the Kamal's Druidic Vow has been a better fair card than I was expecting it to be, but the Bond to Jace part of this deck has kind of just been awful and garbage. 
I I feel like I would rather I would rather play like a teamer ramp deck with the teamer ultimatum in it rather than um rather than like what this is doing. Is it a fictional show or is it like a, like a John Oliver last week tonight type thing? Teamer, teamer, blue, blue, red, and green. With the, whatever the teamer ultimatum is called. I think it's Jet Genesis ultimatum, if I recall correctly. Could you try to build a teamer with the ultimatum? Yeah, that'd be a fine builder on submission. I think there's also some other folks that have tweeted out. I think I've seen some elemental variations with that at various points. Machaeus. Okay. <sighs> All right. Hey, Patahari, thanks for the 10 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, so just to, just to wrap up concisely here, um, Juridic Vow actually felt like a neat kind of go over the top card in this archetype. Um, the Jace Wielder of Mysteries Bantu aspect with it felt bad. Um, having to play Massacre Girl instead of playing a real Sweeper felt kind of bad. Um, I think if you're looking to go over the top in a ramp mirror, maybe focusing on Teamer with Genesis Ultimatum is a better direction to go in. This obviously doesn't let you look at X cards, but it looks at five cards for seven mana, just like Druidic Vow does, but it guarantees gets you all the permanents and it draws the ones that you're not you're not putting into play or don't want to put into play. So I think if you're looking to go over the top in ramp mirrors, this could be probably better. And then you could play some real sweepers. Then you're not forced to play like Massacre Girl. So like with things like Flame Sweeper, Storm's Wrath, maybe you could be a little bit better against the aggressive decks than what this was. Like Uro, Grazer, Storm's Wrath, Flame Sweep, you probably have like a ramp deck shell there. That's actually pretty decent against aggro. All right. Speaking of going over the top of people... We are going to take a quick ad break while I get things set up and flipped over to the next one. But when we get back, we are going to kick the tires on some mono black control again. This deck made the finals of the last Oaklandia Open. It was very good last time we played it on stream. If it has another okay uh, run today, I'm going to definitely throw it up on the website. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere. Hey, C-Lab, thanks for the year and a half. I appreciate it. Welcome back. <laughs> 